Hey guys, welcome to episode 2 of season 9 at Cambridge United. Thank you for all of your feedback on yesterday's and the days before, or day before's episodes with regards to your feedback for this upcoming transfer window. One of the potential uh, targets you asked me to look at was Anthony Martial. But you can see here there, he's already moved to Everton in this window, as has Deli Alli to Atletico Madrid, being replaced by Nicolo Barella at Liverpool, coming in from Cagliari. So uh, the three top deals so far, all uh, interlinking with either each other or myself. We have at present, as you know, £98 million available to us. Now, the majority of the feedback was that you don't think that I should sell to buy. Because I, I'm obviously, primarily the aim is for squad depth and quality in depth. So you don't think I should sell Ollie Skip or Collins or Clark or Mepham. So I will not. The alternative, and I, I ran this by you guys on Twitter in a poll earlier this morning. As you see this is, or as I'm recording this, it's 11.26 uh, morning of. I put a vote up uh, a couple of hours ago and I asked, because of course we won the Champions League last year and the FA Cup and got 160 million from the uh, Premier League result. Yes, we finished sixth, but still 160 million. And we probably raised about 70 by the uh, time we finished the Champions League as well. The general consensus was that's still really not that big a budget. So I asked on Twitter, would you be open to me getting a financial takeover in season nine here to reflect what should be our financial position after winning the Champions League last season? And with 500 votes, 76% have said yes. So we will be redeeming a financial takeover here in this save in Season 9. A, it gives us a more reflective transfer it for our success of last season. B, means I don't have to sell to buy, so we can improve on the quality without sacrificing the depth. So I think that's a good middle ground. I very rarely use a financial takeover. This may only be the second time ever that I've used one in a career mode, so it's not a regular occurrence on the channel it won't become a regular occurrence on the channel but it does feel appropriate for this moment in time so we've got a transfer uh boost we'll get that once we advance the day we're actually on the a match day so i can't advance yet without playing the ua for super cup which we will do momentarily but i want to show you guys the options that you gave me on the bench on the bench on the transfer list still waiting on scout reports on a couple but General consensus is you would like me to upgrade on Stefan for simmed games more than anything else. And rather than having a first team and a rotated team, you reckon I should have a first team and a sim team. So all my highest rated players in a sim team, which is going to be similar to my starting 11, but it won't be identical. So Dean Henderson was an option at goalkeeper, the only one that was really mentioned. So I will prioritize him as a goalkeeper re uh, replacement if we sign one. But I would like to prioritise outfield first. At centre-back, we've William Saliba. There weren't many options at centre-back. He was the only one that was mentioned that I saw in uh, in the comments section of the 200-plus comments. At left-back, there are a number of options. Alfonso Davis, obviously, is already in the Premier League at Manchester City. Brandon Williams is at Manchester United. And, crucially, is transfer-listed. Valued at £58 million, Has a release clause of 10 I could cheat and re and redeem that, but I, I feel really cheap doing so. Really cheap doing so, and I don't think I will. But I would be open to signing him. And because he's transfer listed, we could still get him cheaper than uh, his current value. But I think re uh, doing that release clause is a bit too much. We did it with Sander Berger because it, was, it wasn't quite so disparate. It wasn't quite such a gap between release clause and overall value. But that's a bit much, I think. But Brandon Williams, I am open to getting at left back. And actually, one thing that was mentioned, we could use... Obviously, Wilson is my current left back. And... Uh, I can't remember his name. My right back is my current right back. Pedro Sarazol or something like that, isn't it? Why if I not remember my own player's name? Perez Sayol. There we go. Perez Sayol is my current uh, right back. Now, Wilson is right-footed. 
So it was suggested that we could use Perez Seal as still my starting right back, have Wilson as my backup right back, sign a new starting right uh, left back, and potentially a uh, backup left back too. That is something I would be open to doing. So Brandon Williams would come in as my starting left back, and then potentially, potentially we'd sign someone like Teo Hernandez, who's probably going to be a little bit lower rated. Reguillon is at Arsenal as well and 30 years of age at 60 million, 60 million, at 86 rated and is going to be cheaper than uh, the 60 million for Brandon Williams. So that could be a genuine option as well. Angelino is still at Manchester City, probably going to be early 80s, but would be good enough for a backup. Not sure how expensive he's going to be right now. So we do have plenty of options at left back. Brandon Williams is transfer listed, so he's probably the priority at this stage. With regards to the winger role, they Serge Gnabry at Manchester, a number of the players on this list are all annoyingly at the same clubs all look, somehow made their way to the Premier League. Serge Gnabry is valued at £28 million pounds. for an 85 rated player I'm not sure, an 85 rated player who's that versatile I'm not sure I can turn that option down I'd be very keen on signing Serge Gnabry quite cheap. Daniel James I'm waiting to see how highly valued he is now Bakayo Saka was a very popular option. You guys were really keen on Bakayo Saka as a left back and or left winger. Unfortunately, his defensive stats really aren't that good. But if I started to heavily train them, it could be an option. Again, really lowly release clause, which is frustrating. But I would go for a bid around about his value or just below. He's transfer listed too, I believe. There's Pedri at Barcelona. Also transfer listed, obviously wouldn't be able to be utilised as a left back. But I mean, I could sign I could sign Brandon Williams as my first team left back and then Saka as a backup left back. It depends how much money we get from this financial takeover. Thiago Almada can play on the left-hand side of midfield. I imagine he's going to be very fast. He's a cam by default, but has a number of good uh, traits. And I could use him in my Sim 11 while still maintaining... Um, Jack Rolls in my starting 11 at Cam. That could be something we could work around. Again, not sure on his valuation yet. Martin Erdegaard is very good. His finishing is only 80, which is his lowest stat. But again, great for a Sim 11 and a fantastic player to have in the squad if we get there. This guy, Gonzalo Mazzacco. Lionel Messi regen. Right wing striker, centre forward. Five star, five star. Looks like physically he's going to be Phenomenal, but I'm not sure what his overall or value are going to be. If it's anything like the Ronaldo regen, which is also on my list, then he's going to be bloody pricey. Callum hudson Adoy is also an option for out wide, as per your suggestions. He too is relatively uh, middle range with regards to his pricing. You'll see, you'll see why I say that's middle range in a moment. Trin Chow, or Trin Sao, probably Trin Chow actually. Um... Francisco Trinchao. Not sure what his value is. About 60 as well. Don't know anything of him, but 88 rated at Braga would certainly be a step up to come to a club like me. Could genuinely be an option. Uh, we'll go to the Ronaldo regen last. Joshua Xerxes was an option at striker to maybe potentially move Abadia out wide. It's not something I'd want to do really, but it was an option suggested, so I'm showing you that I've seen it and acknowledging it. Christian Pulisic was a popular option as well for the left-hand side of midfield. 86 rated. Good dribbling and good ball control, but outside of that, technically not that impressive. Despite an 86 overall rating. Gabriel Martellini is transfer listed. Is transfer listed. And 90 finishing on him too. I think Martellini might be the go-to for the left side of midfield. And Fati is also... Available. He's also expensive at 80 million. Could cost me over 100. And he's on 190 grand a week. But does look decent. So as things stand, I'm looking at Brandon Williams. And I'm looking at Gabriel Martinelli as my two main signings this season. And then maybe we wait till January to make another one and see how just those two signings make a difference to our side. I may sign, depending on how much money we have and or have left, I may sign a rotation wing back as well and maybe look to still sell someone but one of the lower rated players for a minimal fee. Ronaldo regen. 
Bruno Alexandre Farzim Miranda at Halas Verona. Two star skills, three star weak foot, high low work rates. Very good physically. 92 strength along with that pace, agility and balance. Really strong uh, technically as well. His finishing could be better. His passing could be better. But 99 curve. Technical dribbler trait as well. Are you ready? £137.5 million pound valuation. That's why the other £60 or £70 million pound players I said were mid-range. And I expect... Mazako as Messi's region to be about the same. We will find out in due course. At present, we have the UEFA Super Cup today and then Liverpool at the end of the week and then Brighton and Tottenham to end the month. I am expecting a Carabao Cup game to come in either this week or this week. So we shall play it by ear. We'll play Liverpool and Manchester United today at least and then we'll wait and see what happens with uh, the Carabao Cup as to what we do from there but I think to start I am going to try and get Brandon Williams in right away I am going to try and get that deal done right away so they reckon I can bid about his valuation I won't go for that cheeky release clause but we should be able to get him for a decent amount I wonder if I could swap someone would they be interested perhaps in someone like Sweeney the answer is no what positions are they looking for a midfielder, a winger, or a striker. I will try. I do have the option to uh, potentially uh, utilise players in those other positions as part of a swap deal. Let's try other position, winger-wise. Uh, you guys weren't keen on me selling Ethan Clark. I will offer him, though. But it is a no. And then midfielder-wise... Uh, Palomino, they go for to Palomino. No, they might want someone a little bit high quality. Needs and budget, yeah. Uh, offer other player. I could try Ollie Skip, but no, they're not interested in him either. Okay, just a transfer fee then. Well, I'll offer below valuation and see what they say. That is a bit cheeky to go in at 45, but they are willing to negotiate to about 50, which is l significantly less than what his value is. So I'll go in at 48, 10 million below value, and they should accept that, and they do. Big potential moves. What's he on a week at the minute? 120 grand, which is sizable. Sizable. But hopefully we can get him to sign for something a little bit less, maybe about 120 grand. Wait and see, four-year deal. We're probably going to do at least one more season. Well, obviously we'll have this season, and we we might have a season 10 as well. No release clause is fine by me. Depends what we win this year. Uh, Salary-wise, would you be willing to accept 100 grand and a £400,000 signing on fee? Banging. We have a new starting left-back to play against his former team in his very first ever game in this next fixture. Brandon Williams is in to play against Manchester United for the UEFA Super Cup. Yes, please. Delighted with that. We'll wait and see what the uh, how much money we have left from the financial takeover after we've played this game. But that's one signing done and a very pleasing one too. Brandon Williams will make his start and his debut in the UEFA Super Cup. Drop the video a like if you're enjoying and you... Uh, planning on watching the remainder of this series make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out and hit that notification bell to ensure you definitely don't miss a video and for now let's jump in and try and win some silverware which we weren't able to do in the community shield last time out Manchester United's lineup Pereira in goal Sacco Maguire Fernandes and Bailly at left back for them now Galbraith and De Jong Jack Clark Pereira and Chong with Belotti at striker as was the case with the game against Chelsea, not their strongest lineup they could put out, but it is actually slightly stronger than the Chelsea one. And to be fair, Chelsea did beat me, so I definitely have to improve here. Brandon Williams gets his first touch of the ball early on, just trying to settle those nerves in his first game. I will actually change some of the squad numbers as well. You guys did ask me to do that, and I haven't to this point, but I will give Don Brown the number eight, and uh, Sander Berger can drop to the number six. Rolls will still be my number 10 for the time being. We are contemplating bringing in another cam that's higher rated to start either ahead of Jack or to be used in a sim 11 and off the bench. 
I have had a reluctant blessing from Jack to sign someone higher rated than him for the first team, provided that if we do so, we retire the number 10 shirt. So if we do sign someone that's higher rated than Jack to play in the first team at Cam, we will do so, but we will retire the number 10 shirt in Jack Rolls' honour at his request. So we'll have to wait and see what happens in the transfer window. For now, though, the left winger signing is the more obvious one to make. So we'll go for Martinelli and then see how much money we've got left. After that, to be fair, I'd probably go for a goalkeeper over a cam because I can still use Campos at cam. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I think for the time being, Jack's place in the team is safe because he does play at a hell of a lot higher than 81 rated. And he does have potential higher than 81 as well. So he should grow a little bit more this season. You guys have asked me to... Oh, I'm nearly getting in ahead of Harry Maguire. have asked me to manually change his overall with the live editor, but I'm not really happy doing that. I don't want to manually overall uh, player overalls, etc. I don't mind the odd thing of changing a position because, you know, you can realistically... Um, you can realistically envisage that in real life, a player retraining in position. But a player in their overall getting a massive boost or even a slight boost artificially... Not so sure I'm on board with that one. Similar to the uh, not using the very, very low release clauses that are available for a couple of players. It seems a bit cheap and a bit mechanic abusey to me. And I don't really want to abuse the mechanics like that if we can help it. Because we want to do what we do and achieve what we can on merit. Rather than cheat the system. And I, I don't want to cheat the system. But you guys really knew that already. So I don't expect anything to change too much in that regard. Work that around to Brown. It's a lovely run by Jack, but I can't find him. Sander Berger could get it in here. And Baron Ache has made a good turn, but Jack Clark's tracked back and we'll get rid of it. We've had the majority of the possession in the opening half an hour, but I haven't yet done anything with it. Williams down the line into Baron Ache. Jack Rolls skipping away. Here's Abadia. Rolls has made a good run. Arriving late. Don Brown to score oh, his first goal back at the club. A good block from the defender. They have defended very well, Manchester United. Very well indeed. Really hard to break down. Can I get to that with Campos? I have to be wary with him now because he is on a yellow card. I don't want to get him sent off and have him banned for the first Champions League game of the season. That quickly forward to Abadia there. Brown is ready and raring to go in support. And Baron Ache is on the run. It's nice actually to have some more English talent in the team with uh, the introduction of Brandon Williams. I'll try and pull this back. We found Abadia well and again another good block from a United defender. It's like they've been channeling their inner Eusebio Cano, isn't it? They've clearly seen what he does game after game for me and are trying to replicate it and it's working for them so far. Here's Jack Clark. Nice tackle by Brandon Williams. Utilise his, utilise his tactical knowledge of his former team against Manchester United here. Trying to step in on Frankie there. Galbraith brings it forward. Here's Andrea Bellotti. His finishing stat is going to be very high. So I have to be wary of him getting too much space. That's a nice turn by Chong. Here's Andreas Pereira. And Chong back to Andreas again. Don't want to let them have a corner. In fact, we'll have a goal kick. And we'll have a free kick because Chong was offside. And it will be half-time at 0-0. Campos is trying to chase him down. I have got some changes waiting to be made. That was a terrible clearance. Changes waiting to be made. Salisu with a nice little nudge in the back, though. He's made up for it. With uh, Campos being moved to Cam. Giovanni Reina being brought on on the right-hand side of uh, midfield. To try and give us some extra pace out wide and the extra stamina in the middle. Because Campos has 99 stamina and Jack's getting a little bit tired now. Galbraith could do something for Manchester United here with not that much time left in the game. If they get a goal now, I dare say it's probably going to be the winner. They're going to take the free kick on the edge of the box. I, mean, I don't know, it wasn't Campos, Campo, Cam, it wasn't Campos, was it, who made the foul. So no red card, thankfully. Andreas Pereira stood over it, as well as Chong. Pereira is going to step up, shoot. Oh, and it's just out of the reach of Stefan. Yes. Derek Ray, absolute perfection. Inch perfect free kick from Andreas Pereira and Manchester United lead. 
Jumped with the wall, couldn't get there. The dip, oh, it's just inside the post. I don't think any goalkeeper gets to that. Wow. 1-0 to Manchester United with their first shot of the game after 78 minutes. Giovanni Reiner off the bench, so going to try and terrorise by here. Getting that into Campos, who's turned well. Oh, but can't get away from Galbraith. They've brought Mason Greenwood on as well. So they have to make matters worse. Oh, Berger can't get a foot to that. Greenwood's got runners all around him, but he's going to go backwards. And now United's patient build-up play makes absolute sense when they've got a lead to defend. Rather than being gung-ho about things. Chong, oh, for a minute, that was going to go in. A bit ambitious to try a header from there, but worth a go, I suppose. James Garner on in midfield there for them now, for Galbraith. Campos to Don Brown and forward to Abadia. Heresiol pushing forward from right back, but it's gone to Reina. Back to Abadia. Oh, can't get away from Frankie, but should win that back. No, Andreas Pereira gets his foot in. Ah, oh, come on, win this back. Yes, Peresiol. Love that. Rate that very highly. Give that to Abadia and make the run again. Over the top. Looking for Giovanni Reina. He scored in the... No, the touch was so dead. He scored in the FA Cup final against Manchester United to give us a third... No, it was actually the second was Giovanni Reina, wasn't it? To put us in front in the FA Cup final. But it's defeat in the Community Shield and defeat in the UEFA Super Cup. I don't really want to watch them lift that trophy just as I didn't want to watch Chelsea lift theirs. And I didn't create anything in the second half. I had my chances in the first 45, didn't put it away. Manchester United had their chances in the second half and did put one away. That touch from Giovanni Reina was better. Oh, it could have been a different story. Collins wants to have uh, some football now that we've decided to keep him. £3.5 million for losing the Super Cup final. Thank you very much. How much money have we got? It hasn't gone in yet. Okay, maybe it will do now that I've advanced the day actually properly via the calendar. Okay, where's my, uh, where's my financial takeover, lads? I've redeemed it and I've not gotten it um please please can i have some money okay not sure about that not sure why i haven't got it at all we'll go into this game against liverpool then with that state with that same 11 that's what i might do let me start Rayner on the right hand side and campos at cam sorry jack just to just to see what it might be like a little bit harsh doing that, but just see what it might be like. Right, actually, let me go and adjust some squad numbers as well, and then we'll jump into the game against Liverpool. And I might have to redeem another financial takeover to actually get it to work. Liverpool starting 11. Allison back between the sticks for them. Trent, Vandenberg, Matip and Klosterman. Danny Olmo, Barela and Bruno Fernandes. Barela, new signing, obviously. Salah, Gabriel Jesus and Najaria on the left. Gabi Jesus signed from Tottenham last season, obviously, for Liverpool. Always tended to do very well against me for Tottenham. So I expect him to be just as difficult a challenge for Liverpool, especially with players like Mo Salah alongside him. Thankfully, the midfield isn't that strong. It certainly is strong, but it could be stronger. And Liverpool only just squeaked fourth place last year. So I would like to think that we're about at their level. And with... Our improvements to the 11. Most notably, just the one in defence so far. But hopefully we can get that money situation sorted out. And then try and get Martinelli in. We should, fingers crossed, be able to improve quite considerably. And be above their level and go for the title this season. I, I hasten to say, or I'm apprehensive to say. Oh, good save. I'm apprehensive to say that I won't stop this save until I've won the Premier League because I very well could go the entirety of the full uh, 15 seasons you get on career mode without winning the Premier League. And I'm sure you guys would get a bit bored of that by uh, that point. But if I can win the Premier League this year or next year, then I think that would be the end of the series as things stand. We've won the Champions League already. We'll look to try and retain that this year if we can. But the Premier League is the only main trophy left that I would like to win here at Cambridge United before ending the series. So, wait and see what we can do. Sanderberger in the way there. Salisu having the strength, I thought, to hold off Matic. 
Berger not having strength either, and we're having to rely on a number of shot blocks there. But we get away, and Brandon Williams will look for Abadir, who's in behind here. It was poor defensive work from Trent there, getting himself all out of position. And now we've turned well, and we'll pull it back to Brown. And then look for Campos, in at Cam, and onto the score sheet. In the 21st minute, Cambridge 1, Liverpool 0. We have a 100% record in the Premier League so far. To one game, beating Leicester 3-0 yesterday. But now we've scored four in the Premier League and are yet to concede. But we are only 20 minutes in and there's plenty of time. Abadir gets it down and under control and Baron Achea can break away. He's going to go again, Baron Achea, but I can't really find him. I was hoping to just be able to spin past one and then find a teammate with Abadir, but I spun past one and then there was another white shirt there waiting to take it off me. We brighten next, but we're not sure yet what's going to happen with that first... Carabao Cup fixture of the season. Bruno Fernandes can't squeeze his way through there. Oh my God, the pressure. The pressure from the back, trying to play it out. And it costs me. And how many times have I done that in this save? My mistake. And Liverpool are back in. Our first goal conceded. I just, straight under pressure. I, I don't know what I could have done there other than just smacked it out for a throw. <sighs> Bruno Fernandes. Former Manchester United man scores for Liverpool against Cambridge. Ah, oh, Ches, what have you done there? What have you done there? Trent Alexander-Arnold on the counter-attack. Not to be finding someone. Look at that pressure, though. It's really difficult to deal with. Pressure will look down the line for Giovanni Reina. This is why we put him in the starting lineup on that wing because of that pace. He'll turn. He'll look for a teammate. He'll find him and thumped home by Baron Atea. My error eradicated. Cambridge 2, Liverpool 1. We're in the lead again, and oh, thank the Lord for that. And uh, you might well be being replaced on that left side if we can find some more money. But whilst you're still in the starting 11... Oh, what a finish. Thank you for having an impact. Bosh. Pick that out. Top bins. Oh, as if he's offside. He's got to be offside. Surely he's offside. He's not offside. Ball played in. Jesus. Oh, it's a great interception, but so unlucky. Just falls straight free to Dani Olmo, who just simply squares it to Gabi Jesus. Fortuitous first for Liverpool. Fortuitous second for Liverpool. Lucas Nemecha is now one up top for Abadia, who's just been, well, quiet. I think it's probably the kindest way to phrase it. Not at the races today. Lovely ball to Giovanni Reina. Get past the defender. Yes, we can. Stand up the cross. Keeper will tip it. Lucas is there. Back here. Sander Berger across there. Don Brown through there. Giovanni Reina. But their interception falls to their man. Not the opposition. Like it did at the other end. That's the difference on this occasion. They've had the luck. I've had the misfortune and the mistakes. And they're going to, well, not necessarily profit from it because they haven't won. But they're going to at least break even from it with what looks like a 2-2 draw unless something dramatic happens in the final few minutes, which it genuinely could. Harry Wilson off the bench for them here. Linking up with Trent. Fired into Gabby Jesus. A nice one too into the middle. Bruno Fernandes' head is going to go over the bar. Thankfully, one final change for them. Not sure who that was coming on or going off. We'll find out momentarily. Presiol into Nemecha. Out looking for Reina. Can't get there ahead of Joshua Vanaman, who's the one that's come on. It was he who's entered the fray, and he's had a vital impact, even though he's only going to be on the pitch for a few minutes. And what is Harry Wilson doing in that much space, lads? What are you doing? No, get a block on it. Get rid of it. Ah, what was that? Jeepers creepers. 2-2 two, two is the final result. Oh. That had me a little bum all going. I wasn't sure if we were going to lose that in the final few minutes. Oh, dearie me. I certainly wasn't good enough with regards to the amount of chances I created. But, I mean, we were 1-0 and 2-1 up on merit at the time. So lucky with their second Liverpool. And in fairness to them, they made the most of my mistake for the, uh, for the first. I just should have put it out for a throw. I just... I don't have that in my makeup to just throw possession away like that. But I really should try and add that to my game because it's it's clearly costing me goals. We have Watford in the Premier League as our next game. 
And my my thingy's not coming through, is it? My financial takeover's not coming through. I only have one left. I will try. Please, please, please give me my financial takeover. It's broken. Uh, I don't know what to do there then. I don't know what to do. I might look into trying to edit my budget somehow. Because the financial takeover clearly is not going to work. We have 50 million there. I could maybe double my remaining budget. We spent about what about 50 on... Um, on Brandon Williams, didn't we? So it would have been basically upping my budget from 98 to 150, effectively, there or thereabouts. I'll look into perhaps seeing if I can do that. If I can't, I apologise, but it's not working. So it's out of my uh, out of my hands, unfortunately. Martina, Gabriel, Martinez, Martinelli is on the transfer list, so I could try and get him. Try and get him a little cheaper. Where is he? He's a left winger, isn't he, Martinelli? I could try and get him a little cheaper, but then I'm not sure if I'd be able to afford his wages. And so Fatty's more expensive. Pulisic is cheaper. We could go for Christian Pulisic. Martinelli was my preference. Hmm. I'll see what I can put into... A f oh, have we got the scout full scout report back for him yet? We have... Oh, he's expensive. Not quite as expensive as the... Uh, as the Ronaldo reason. Can I loan him? No. Was a, was a wild card option. Looks like he's going to be good though. Almada. What are you valued at? 44. Can I loan Almada? No. Ah. Really frustrating that that hasn't worked. Come on. Ah, not. Oh, I didn't want to approach to buy. I wanted to, wanted to approach to loan. Balls. Uh, oh, he's valued very lowly. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to sign him. So I'll just offer a pound, and they'll walk away, and then we can maybe try and loan him a week later. Oh, that's annoying. That's so annoying. Why has it not worked? Why it not work for me? Financial takeover. Make me sad. And then there's he's cheap too, so it could get backup options. But I need that left wing. The left wing was the main position I wanted to improve, and I went for the left back first, and then the, I wanted to get the left wing later. Maybe I should have done it the other way around. Ah, oh, so annoying. Right, I'll, I'll see what I can do. We'll actually sim this away game against Brighton. And all of my highest rate players are in that starting lineup, actually. So let's uh, let's sim this away game against Brighton. Presumably get a victory. And then we can regroup for the next episode tomorrow. <sighs> Abadir gives us a 1-0 lead. Please... Oh, Rafa's equalised. Please let me get a victory here so we don't end the episode on a complete... Oh! Complete horrible downturn. Dil Rosen puts... Oh, thankfully we've equalised. Oh, no. We went 2-1 two, two up. Baron Ateo. I hadn't noticed that. I just saw Dil Rosen's goal. Abadia! Oh, yes! We end on a positive. We end on a positive. Let's go. Oh, and relief. And relief. Abadia getting slightly better now. Closer to 87 rated. Right, let me go and try and edit my transfer budget for the next episode. And then, hopefully, we can get the signings that we want. I apologise on behalf of well, the game, I guess, for it not working. On behalf of my content. Kind of annoyed me as well, but what can I do? Other than try and edit it manually. That'll be all for now. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see what I can do. I'll see you tomorrow.